What is going on, YouTube? Joe here with Culination Media, and welcome back to the fifth and final part of our live Pokemon Showdown OU session. And yeah, we're going to wrap things up today with this team. And we've had a couple of shorter episodes, so I'm going to try to fit in a couple of battles in this little finale here. So this might be more like 15 minutes, maybe even almost 20 minutes. I don't really know, but I felt like doing, a, I feel like recording a little bit of a longer final part so i hope that is okay with you guys uh now as we're getting started today just a friendly little reminder as always if you haven't done so already and you would like to show your support to the channel and the series and all that fun stuff you can do so by clicking that thumbs up button right below this video that does help out a lot or you can leave your thoughts in the comment section below feel free to leave your suggestions down there uh because i do try to uh implement as many of those suggestions as possible because a lot of times you guys have better ideas than i do that's just what it is um, all right, so here we go. Frosted Banshee. That's an interesting name. So we got, this is a pretty cool team for OU, I have to say. It's probably going to be Megalopunny, uh, Apom, Porygon 2, which I can't stand seeing. It just, I don't know, Porygon 2 always gets on my nerves. Celebi, Chandelure, and Lucario. So a lot of offensive threats. Celebi may be the lead here, or Ambipom. Hmm. Because, like, yeah, it could be Celebi for rocks, but no, it is going to be the Ambipom. All right, there we go. So, if you want to go for Fake Out, that's fine. I mean, unfortunately, don't have any resist to that, but you're going to get hurt almost as much as I am just from the Rocky Helmet. Actually, more because you have Life Orb. So, that was fantastic. <laughs> that was actually a pro uh, productive turn there. I'll go for a foul play here, and we will get rid of this Ambipom if he wants to stay in. If he wants to bring in something like Low Punny, that's going to take a lot of damage. Even Lucario. Uh, no, he opts to go for the knockoff, so he's going to get hurt by Life Orb, Rocky Helmet, and now Foul Play, and that just finishes him off. So his Fake Out pressure is gone, unless he has Fake Out on this thing. Uh, why would you bring this out here? I don't know, I'm going to go for the Foul Play. He goes for the T-Punch, does not make it evolve, so... Huh, maybe he doesn't have a Mega Evolution. I'll Roost here, see what he wants to do. Uh, no, he is going to Mega Evolve, okay? I think he just forgot uh, that time around. As we Roost... And, yeah, I mean, he's at 68%. Now he's part fighting type, too, so we resist our foul play. But I'll go for it anyway, because Thunder Punch isn't doing that much. Uh, Drain Punch did a little bit less than that as well. Oh, he left. Okay, well, we were going to take out the uh, Low Bunny that turn anyway, so I guess it doesn't matter. Let's just get into another battle. And this is a more OU-ish type of team with Thunderous, Tyranitar, Excadrill, Greninja, Azumarill, and Latias. Hmm... Thunderous may be the lead here, or T-Tar for rocks. Uh, I have to watch out for that extra drill with Sand Rush, um, because, you know, Sand Stream with the T-Tar is a thing. In fact, that may even be Mega T-Tar, or Mega Latias, even. So many options. So he does lead off with the Thunderous. I will go for Spikes here, predicting a T-Ball, and hopefully he doesn't go for the Prankster T-Wave. I mean, we can always get rid of that later on, but... Mm, maybe I should be going for Ice Beam here, because I outspeed anyway. What would he, what would he switch in? Azumarill, maybe? That's possible. It's very possible. There's a lot of things that could be going on here. He's taking his time thinking about the move that he wants to make, and I always found that very strange. Like, he started the timer. Like, why do people start the timer and then take forever to choose their move? Like, isn't the whole idea of you turning the timer on, like, indicating to your opponent that... I would like this to be a little bit more of a um, fast-paced match. And he opts to go for the T-Wave the first turn. We set up spikes. And then he goes for the T-Bolt again the turn after. I guess that was either a misclick or he forgot that I was ground-type and just tried to uh, KO us there with the T-Bolt. That doesn't affect us, and Ice Beam is a one-shot. So Thunderous is out of the picture. That is awesome for us because then we can bring in Ivy and get up a... A uh, aromatherapy to restore Cam's usefulness because uh, he could be very, very useful in taking on that Latias and maybe even the Excadrill. I don't know. The priority with Shadow Sneak is always nice, and the U turn will probably do a decent amount to uh, Titar as well because it is super effective. But first things first, we need to get an aromatherapy off. He opts to go for the Aqua Jet, which I think he may have outsped anyway without the Aqua Jet because we were paralyzed? I don't know. I'll go for a Moonblast here, though, just in case he wants to switch in something predicting an Aromatherapy, thinking he's going to get a free switch or something. Nope, he opts to just stay in and go for a Waterfall 
That does 44%, so unless he gets like crazy max damage here, we should be able to take this. Uh, and he's not going to get a flinch either because we outspeed. So I'll go for the aromatherapy. He opts to go for the play rough, and we survive with 1%. Wow. His play rough is barely a little bit stronger. Well, I guess not barely. It's 10 base power. That's kind of a lot. Kind of. I don't know. Maybe that's the wrong choice of words. It's not a lot. It's just there's a little bit of a difference there. That is what I was trying to say. But uh, we got a little bit lucky there, I think. I feel like that was a low roll for us to survive at 1%. But I will take it. And we get that extra lefties recovery with the protect. And I will switch in Nightwing here as he goes for the play rough. That only does 25%. Now, we have to keep in mind that we are weak to the waterfall. So I'm going to go for the EQ that does 28%. And waterfall still is not going to be enough to kill. Uh, Aqua Jet shouldn't be enough either. So I will roost. He is just going to go for the play rough. Predicting a switch. Probably into... I don't know what, maybe Sceptile, but I'm not going to sw switch uh, Sceptile in to take any damage, that's just not happening. I'll Roost again, and we have a layer of spikes up, so if this Azumarill wants to switch out and come back in, it really will only be able to get one hit off before going down. Uh, but the Aqua Jet could prove to be very useful for him. Looking at the rest of his team, he might not have any other priority, so he may want to try to keep this uh, to try to pick up at least one, like cleaning up type of kill later on it may be very useful for him i don't know and he's probably uh thinking that over right now looking at my team he opts to stay in goes for the waterfall and that brings us right back down to where we were before basically 53 percent um we can probably set up stealth rocks here so i'm gonna do that so those extra hazards oh he gets a critical hit and down goes nightwing that is unfortunate because we would have been able to get up another roost and or uh, EQ to get a little bit more damage off. So at least if he wanted to switch out, the Azumarill will be dead coming back in. Provided he was not able to get off a rapid spin with that Excadrill, of course. Um, all right, so Nightwing is out of the picture. Um, Aqua Jet won't KO Ray. So, I mean, I guess we can just come in and threaten him out with a poison jab. Although he does have Excadrill, so if he wants to predict that, he could. Uh, I think I'm just going to go for it. He does go for the Aqua Jet. That doesn't do anywhere near as much as I figured it would. But he's not... Um, he's not Choice Bandit, obviously. Maybe he was Assault Vest. I didn't see... We didn't see Life Orb. We didn't see a Citrus Berry. So that's that. And the T-Tar goes down to 76% just by switching in. Uh, he also, I'm guessing, knows that I'm locked into Poison Jab. I'm not going to go for that. At this point, it might be in our best interest just to sack off Ivy and get a safe switch into something. I don't, or I guess a safe switch back into Ray to uh, force him out at least. He pulls a double into Latias, and this, I don't know, this might work out for us. Let's throw up a wish, as he does go for the Psy Shock to take us out. Okay, so it's Mega Latias. Huh. The coloring on Mega Latias throws me off. I keep thinking that it's Latios. Not that there's that much of a difference, but you know. You know, you know, you know. All right, so this is still weak to uh, U-turn. So we can go in with Ray. I should outspeed it, even though Latias, I believe, gets a little bit of a speed boost uh, after Mega Evolving. So now we know that, that uh, we can rule out the Mega T-Tar. No Mega T-Tar. And his team is very weak to U-turn. Only Excadrill is, out of his remaining Pokemon, is not weak to it. Because uh, his two resistances would be... Uh, well, no, he's got three resistances. I guess, yeah, Excadrill resists it, and then so does Thunderous and Azumarill. But two of those three are KO'd. That did a butt-ton of damage. That did 52% to Omega Latias. That's insanity. The question is, do I want to predict a Psy Shock here? Yes, I do. So into Cam we go, and he does go for the Psy Shock. Which is fantastic. I think he should have went for a, uh, or should have, should have gone for, I guess, or sh I don't know. I'm just trying to focus on my next move and trying to create uh, English sentences doesn't work out for me for some reason. But I have no reason not to U-turn here, so I will do that. Down goes the Latias, and yeah, his Mega is out of the way, and that's a huge threat out of the way as well. What I was trying to say before is that I figured he would try to go... Well, I didn't figure it because I predicted a Psy Shock, but I think the better move may have been to go for a Dragon-type move because uh, Florge is on our side. It's KO'd, so it's not like we have anything immune to it. So, I don't know. 
I don't know. You know, hindsight is always 2020. I, you know, even in my own matches, even when I win, when I go back and watch them again as I'm editing for you guys and, you know, to put it up on the channel and everything, that's when I see all of the mistakes and I go, what in the world was I thinking? Why did I make this silly play? Or there was, you know, there's no reason to make this stupid prediction. Uh, so, you know, you always, you always see the right play afterwards. It's, that's just what it is. That's just Pokemon for you. All right, so he needs to uh, make a decision here. As we have Mandy out, he opts to bring in his own Greninja, which gets down to 76% thanks to our hazards that we have up. It looks like he's not making any attempt to get a rapid spin off with Excadrill. And he goes for the Ice Beam. We survive. He takes the Life Orb damage, and somehow he survives the foul play. But thanks to uh, that Sandstream, which he, it looks like he's holding um, a smooth rock because that was the fifth turn, I believe. But anyway, that takes out the Greninja. So if he didn't have the smooth rock, uh, he would still have Greninja. And that is uh, it's a bit unfortunate for him. And again, another big threat out of the way. This entire team really is full of threats. Every KO means something. Oh, feels like, you know, at the beginning of this battle, it felt like I had six monkeys on my back and four have jumped off because they were tired. They were very tired. I'm gonna guess that uh, Excadrill's gonna come out now because you have three turns left of sand. Or do you want to, I don't know. Oh, he is going to disconnect. Well, okay then. I figured he would bring out the Excadrill, try to do some damage, try to last three turns if possible, and then switch the Tyranitar back in, get that sand up for another eight turns, and then outspeed everything that he possibly could. Uh, the, the question would be, would you be able to one-shot a Mega Sceptile? I don't know if you would, because he would outspeed as long as the sand was up. Unless he was Sand Force, which I believe is Excadrill's other ability. He gets Sand Force and Mole Breaker. Oh, he could be Mole Breaker, too. But with Smooth Rock Tyranitar, you figure that... I don't know. But anyway, we're waiting just to... Uh, he's, he's gone. He just... He didn't forfeit. He just left so he must have just exited out of his browser or something i don't really know but i know this video has been about hmm, let's see it's been about 12 and a half minutes since i've started recording and yeah i mean i wanted to do a, a longer episode to end this off so you know what we're gonna go ahead and search for another battle because because why not? We might as well have an extra bonus battle. That first battle didn't really count because, what, he forfeited after like five turns or something with that Mega Lupunny. I don't know. It seemed like we were going to win that. We were getting on track to get some momentum going there because his Lupunny was about to go down. But I guess I'm just talking out my wazoo here. Why is my screen frozen? Oh, Mandibuzz is still moving on my screen, but my mouse is like frozen. Come on, come on, there we go, okay. Sorry about that. For some reason, um, the screen capture thing was not working as it should, but we're back. And we've got another team here, another Latias. Magnezone and Ferrothorn have been very common because the dragon types have been all over the place and Ferrothorn is great for, or not Ferrothorn, um, whatchamacallit, Magnezone is great for trapping Mega Gross, so that's always good. Although they, t they tend to carry uh, EQ as well. So, I don't know. I don't know too much about uh, the, the, the changes in the meta with the new Megas yet. Anyway, this Mammoth Swine does have the Focus Sash. So, unfortunately, in order to not give up Ray in turn one, we needed to switch out. He's going to bring in the Ferrothorn to take that Shadow Sneak. And he does have the... No, that was, that was not Rocky Helmet. That was Life Orb plus Iron Barbs. Ugh. We took way more damage there. Yikes. Way, way more damage. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have much to handle Ferrothorns. Other than HP Fire on Sceptile. That's really it. Uh, but, at the same time, Ferrothorn doesn't have much that he can do to me. So, well, there, there's a couple of things here. First, I want to go for an EQ. Oh, okay. For some reason, I thought he would switch in Magnuson. I guess I'm just, just over-predicting all over the place. One goal that we want to have for this match is to get rocks up before he can bring in that uh, the Mega Salamence, because because we all know that's going to be Mega Salamence. It just it just is. I don't. Does he have any other? 
Oh no, it could be Mega Latias too. But either way, uh, the Salamence is dangerous. So we want we want that to at least take the 25% when it comes in. So I'm just, just talking out, uh, like I said, talking about nonsense here. Now, we showed off the hidden power fire as he goes for the protect. The question is, we need to make a prediction here. He's going to switch in Latias. Latias or Salamence. There's the Latias and 81%. Yes. Yes. And now we get the two at KO. He leaves it in to go down. So if that was his Mega, which it doesn't, he didn't Mega Evolve, which he could have there. So I don't know. Now he's going to bring in Mamoswine and he is going to Ice Shard, I would think. Hmm. Quite possibly. So I guess we can switch in Cam again, but if he switches the Ferrothorn in again afterwards, we're taking all kinds of damage. But looking at the rest of his team, Cam would only really be useful for the Salamence. And that's about it. Ice Beam does nothing to Mamoswine. I mean, he's at 1%, so I guess that's kind of a moot point. But uh, I'm not going to fare well against an opposing Greninja. And Magnezone, kind of a similar situation there. Shadow Snake's going to kill, or not going to kill. He does switch in the Ferrothorn, so we're going to go down to the Spikes, plus Life Orb, plus Iron Barbs. Felt like that was just the safe play to make. So unfortunately, I kind of sacrificed Cam there, which was probably not the best play on my part, just because I'm so worried about that Salamence. But he can't do a whole lot to Nightwing, so we can come in... We can defog the spikes away or, you know, and possibly set up our own rocks as well. So, let's see. Is he, he's probably got a Leech Seed here, right? That seems like something that Ferrothorn would do. So let's defog. Yeah, there's the Leech Seed. And he's back up to 77%. I'm fine with taking another turn of Leech Seed damage to get up rocks here. As he goes for the Gyro Ball, that really doesn't do that much. We could even roost up here, but I think... Hmm. Is he going to go for Gyro Ball again? If so, we can switch in Mandy because then he takes Rocky Helmet damage. Yep, he does go for the Gyro Ball. It does 21%, but he does take that Rocky Helmet damage. He's going to Leech Seed here, so I will taunt you. There you go. He can't use Leech Seed. And all of his remaining Pokemon take quite a bit from Foul Play. Even Greninja, even though it's a resisted hit. Because Greninja is just pretty frail. But we could also take this opportunity to try to pull off a double switch here. He's not gonna he's not gonna go for Gyro Ball again, I don't think. So let's go into Hawlucha. And there we go. He brings out the Magnezone. That's perfect. That is perfect because now high jump kick. Boom! Down goes Magnezone in one hit. That could have been bad if that was a scarf Magnezone. But it is not. He decides to bring in Salamence here. Gets the Intimidate off. That kind of leads me to believe that this is Mega. I mean, he didn't Mega Evolve the Latias earlier when he had the chance. Oh, crap. Is he going to sweep my whole team here? Because I'm locked in a high jump kick. Oh, this is dangerous. This is very dangerous. Um, I guess we can attempt to sacrifice Nightwing here. But if he he's probably going to Dragon Dance. So let's, let's switch in Ivy. There's the Mega Salamence. He is going to Dragon Dance. Probably Return is coming here because he has the Aerolate. No, Substitute. That just makes it easier for me to kill you with a Moonblast here. I don't know that a Return will one-shot a physically defensive. Oh, he goes for Roost. And yeah, it's doing 67%. We get the special attack drop, which means absolutely nothing. But I don't know that you can one-shot Ivy here. You're going to have to try, and wow, it comes very close. 98% and Ivy taking out a Mega Salamence. That is a beautiful thing, and he's just going to sacrifice, or not sacrifice, he just, yeah, sacrifice. Uh, he's just going to uh, forfeit the match there because, uh, I, I don't know, you know, when your Mega Salamence goes down, you just have to forfeit. That seems to be what it is in this tier. If you know, if your Mega Metagross goes down, or your Chansey, or your Mega Salamence, you just have to forfeit immediately. That's just what it is. Uh, anyway, that was a lot of fun. 
Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, episode and this session in its entirety. Feel free to uh, write your suggestions down below if you have a specific tier you would like to see next time. Even though I might be on vacation by the time this uh, part actually goes up on the channel, uh, I still will be checking out the comments and preparing for uh, recording when I get back. So that is that. Like I said, hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please make sure you're leaving a like rating or comment or whatever you would like to do. And I will see you all next time. But until then, game on.